Okay, I want to take a few minutes to talk about homework five and to work an example problem for you. So let's do it just uh, item by item. In the first problem, you're asked to find the total work done by a, a force that has an X and Y component. So what I want to do is solve an example using this force. I have x squared in the x direction and 2xy in the y direction. And so if I write out the work, that means the work will we'll do it along the same paths you have in the homework. So my first path is going to be to from the origin to a point Q at 1, 0 and then up to point P at 1, 1. And then my second path is going to be straight to P along Y equals X squared. So the work is from the origin to P on X squared DX plus 2XY DY. Alright, so that's the problem statement. Let me rewrite it. I have such limited space on this tiny whiteboard. I'm going to have to be erasing a lot. So we have the work is integral x squared dx plus integral 2xy dy. These are both from the origin to p. So first I'm going to do this path from q to p. And so I'm going to split both of these integrals into integrals from uh, uh, the origin to Q and from Q to P. And so I just rewrite origin to Q, x squared dx, plus Q to P, plus origin to Q, 2xy, dy, this should be a dy plus integral q to p 2xy dy sorry about that okay well here in this integral I'm bearing x we're going from o to q so we're along this path here along uh, y equals zero the x-axis and so my x since I'm bearing x my x is going to start at 0 and end at 1 and I just carry the x squared dx okay this is perfectly well defined this should be something that you're used to seeing what about q to p so we're varying x where does x start along this line it starts at 1 and then it ends x is still 1 Okay, let's keep going. Well, from O to Q, or the origin to Q, now I'm varying Y. So, what's the initial Y value here? It's zero. And the final Y value is also zero. Good. I'm just finding my limits here. I'm putting numbers in the limits instead of the points. And what about Q to P? So I'm varying Y. Y does change along this path. It changes from 0 to 1. So I start at 0 and I go to 1. Okay, this is fine. I can just evaluate this. And I end up with 1 third. Uh, let me work that out. Let me work that, work that out for you. So I get the antiderivative of x squared. Remember from your power law, I get 1 over n plus 1, so 3x to the n plus 1. And then I just put my limits over here on the right side of the bracket. That's the notation that I'm used to. I don't know if you're taught a different notation in your calculus class. Okay, what about this one? Well, the limits are the same here. I'm starting and ending in the same spot. So I can immediately say 
that this is zero. Imagine just a normal integral, this is x, this is y, this is y equals x squared. If you start and end in the same spot, there's no area, there's no curve for there to be an area under. And so the integral, the area here is zero. So this is zero. Okay, what about this one? Limits are the same. Boom. Zero, immediately. Well, Alright, this one, the limits are different. That's interesting. Hmm. Now what? Well, I can rewrite this as the integral from zero to one. What's my x value here? My x is constant. And I'm not integrating with respect to x. So I can just fill in two and then the value of x, x is one here along this path, times y dy. So I have an integral here that I need to evaluate. All right, rewrite. Now we have the work is, I'm just gonna rewrite it like this so I can evaluate them at the same time. from the last board. I omitted the zeros. Oh, there you go. So we did this. What about this one? Antiderivative of 2y. I get 2 from here divided by y, n plus 1, which is 2, y to the n plus 1. So really this is just y squared. 2 over 2 is 1. So this one is 1 third and then the upper limit 1 cubed minus 1 third lower limit 0 cubed plus upper limit 1 squared minus lower limit squared. So I get 0, 0, 1 third plus 1 is 4 thirds. So that's the integral along the first path. That's my answer. Now let's do the same thing. Integral O to P x squared dx plus integral O to P 2xy dy. But now my path is y equals x squared, ending at 1, 1. So my work, we're varying x. x goes from 0 to 1. My integrand is just in terms of x. So I can immediately just rewrite this integral from 0 to 1, x squared dx. Nothing wrong there. This one is a little bit more interesting because it would be easier if I could just write this all in terms of a single variable. Then I would have no problem, just like I had here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite dy in terms of dx, first thing, using the equation for the path. So I have y equals x squared. That gives me dy is 2x dx. All I did was take the derivative, dy dx is 2x. I just took the derivative of this, and then I multiplied by dx. So I know what dy is. And I know what y is, too. So sure enough, um, we're changing it to an integral over dx, so we can use 0 to 1. I get 2x, that's fine. y, look, y is x squared. So I just put x squared, and dy, dy is 2x dx. All right, now I have everything just the way I want it in terms of single variables and familiar integrals. I changed. I could have left it in y. I thought it would have been. E I, th I thought it would be easier for you guys to do it x. So two times two here is four, and then I have one, two, three. 4x's. So I get x to the fourth, and my dx follows me. Alright, 
let's do, we already know what this is. This is one third x cubed from the last problem, zero to one. What about this one? Well, we have the four from here, and then we have to divide by n plus one, so five, x to the n plus one, zero to one. So please let me just omit the zeros here. It's going to be zero at both of these points since we just have a power of zero. So this one's going to be one third because x one cubed is one, so we just get one third. And here one to the fifth power is also one, so we get four fifths. And if you want to simplify that you can, I think it's seventeen fifteenths. Check you can check me on that. Alright, so that's how you do these path integrals. And the ones you have for homework should be um, even less complicated than this. Alright, what about number two? Uh, I want you to prove the dot product derivative formula. So what you want to do is just write your vector a in terms of its components ax and ay. And same thing for b. And then do the dot product, do the integral, expand it out in terms of the product rule, collect like terms, and finish the proof. What I do not want to see is like x equals 1, 2, b equals 3, 4, and then uh, the dot product a dot b is some number, so the derivative with respect to time of a number is zero. That is wrong. This is wrong. No, bad, bad. Use this. Okay, that one should be easy. That's the easy one. All right, number three, I want to set up for you so you can do the physics that pertains to this part without getting stuck. So we have two masses, Atwood machine, normal Atwood machine, one and two. And what I want to do is I want to write everything in terms of a single variable x. So it's just a one-dimensional problem. Okay, uh, I don't really have you guys to work off of, so I'm just kind of going to go through the setup real quick. We're going to use that the length of the string is fixed. So the position of block 1 plus the position of block 2 gives you the length of the string. That would be this x1 plus this x2 gives you the length of the string. So if I define my x1 is just my single variable x, then x2 I can write as L minus x1. So this is just L minus my single variable. So this is important. And also, the length of the string is fixed. So my blocks have to move with a velocity determined by this equation. I just took the derivative of this to get to here. And L doesn't change, so this must be 0. So my x1 dot is opposite my x2 dot. So they move with equal and opposite velocities. And that makes sense intuitively as well. And since my x1 is my single variable x, that means that x dot is minus x2 dot. So my x1 dot is x dot. So you can write the total energy in terms of x1, x2, x1 dot, x2 dot, and then convert to just x and x dot. And then you have the total energy in terms of a single variable. And you can proceed with the problem as written.